Welcome back to another video, everybody. I hope you are having a wonderful Tuesday so far. And I know that I haven't made a video in a long time, so here's a good video. Now, as I'm recording this, I'm also editing a motorized bicycle video that will come out probably Wednesday or Thursday. It is a long video, and it'll probably take several hours to edit, which I will not edit all at one time, so it probably will be out in a few days. But anyway, today we are making another Sterling engine video. I really like this Sterling engine and it's a lot of fun. It's also very interesting and you can learn a lot of things from it. Now one thing I noticed, I haven't seen any videos about the topic I'm going to be covering today about these little Sterling engines or just um, generators in general, small generators. Now as you guys know, the Sterling engine has a small DC generator right here, which is how the Sterling engine can charge or power the LED or any other devices that can connect to it. Now I th thought for a second and I figured out, wait a minute, isn't a small DC generator just a motor running in reverse? Isn't this just a motor, right? But uh, instead of powering the motor, the motor is spinning and is powering whatever is connected on the other end of your cord. So I did some research and found out if this is safe and I can do it without destroying the small generator. And I realized that if I were to power this small generator, it essentially is just a motor running in reverse. So it spins like a motor. As I'll demonstrate here, I have a cut up USB cord with the negative and positive wires exposed. And yes, I will get some electrical tape soon so I can make this a little safer and cleaner. But right now it's just kind of exposed because I wanna be able to show it on camera better. So here's the other end of the USB cable. And if you guys are wondering why the audio sounds so good, I am separately recording the audio with my Blue Yeti Nano. This is the first time I'm doing this, and also the first time I actually have to edit and line up the audio, so let me, let me know in the comments how this sounds. But anyway, what I'm going to be powering this whole setup is my portable charger. So this is, let me see on the back here, this puts out 5 volts at uh, 200, 2,100 milliamps. I'm going to disconnect the drive belt from the Sterling engine and I'm going to plug in the portable charger and turn it on and you're not going to be able to see it even if I turn the camera around but you will hear the motor start to spin and since I have my Blue Yeti here you'll probably hear it a lot better. So here I go, I'm going to plug it in right now and I'm going to press the power button. Here we go. I realized something else. What would happen if I put the drive belt onto the motor and turned the motor on, not the generator? And then I realized something else. Wouldn't that just be like electric start? If you think about it in a car, small motor will turn over the piston and when, when the fuel is on and the battery is on, it'll create a spark that'll keep running. Now that motor turns off after the engine is running so it doesn't stress it and kill your battery. So I had to do the same thing here. Once the Sterling engine is running, I will have to unplug it. So I thought, well, is the motor powerful enough to turn over the Sterling engine? Well, let's find out. You can see I have no flame here as I'm touching it. There's no flame, so the engine is not going to start. But let's see if we can turn the engine over with the electric start. Here I'm going to go to turn it on. So it's currently on, and you can see it is turning the Sterling engine over. I'm not exactly sure you would call it a piston. I guess the piston is right here. The cool air piston at least. Hot air piston is right here. So you can see it very slowly turns over the Sterling engine. Now if I give it a little push 
as you'll see, it'll actually almost start the Sterling engine, or it'll act like the Sterling engine is actually running. So here I go. So the Sterling engine is not actually running right now because there's no flame. But as you can see, once there is momentum, the, in, the motor is powerful enough to fully turn over the Sterling engine as if it were running. Now I thought, is the Sterling engine powerful enough to fully start the Sterling engine while there is a flame lit? Now let me unplug this. And this is where the title and thumbnail of the video really come in, because this is an, now an electric start Sterling engine, as you'll see. So I'm going to take my lighter here, and I'm going to light the Sterling engine. Now you probably can't see, because it's an alcohol flame, and it's not a very big flame right now since it hasn't been running for long, but there is, in fact, a small flame that is growing at the hot air piston of the Sterling engine. Now, in about 20 seconds, when the hot air piston is hot enough to combust, or I guess it's not combusting, but you know what I mean, I will plug the electric start motor, as I'll call it, back into the power supply, and we'll see if, without me pushing it, if the electric start on its own can turn over and fully start the Sterling engine. Now as soon as the engine starts, I'm going to unplug it so it does not overstress the engine or the motor. Even though it can over rev like a gasoline engine, it can still drain the power a lot. So I'm going to plug it in now. I'm not sure if it's hot enough or not, but I guess we'll find out. Three, two, one, go. So, as you guys see, the electric start engine completely started, fully started the Sterling engine. Now, I, I have it unplugged now, like I said I was going to. But as you can see, I didn't use my finger or hand or arm at all to turn over the Sterling engine. It started purely from the electric start engine. And I'll do it again, just in case you guys missed it. So I hope you guys could hear me when I was talking, although the engine is very loud. I hope that the Blue Yeti picked that up, I'm sure it is. But I am going to use the electric start to start the Sterling engine once again. In three, two, one. Now you can see the Sterling engine tries to vibrate off the table, so I do have to hold it down on all four corners. And if you do decide to run your Sterling engine without any load, as I am here, you need to hold it down on all four corners, otherwise the opposite corner you're holding it will fall apart and shake everything. I have just blew out the flame so the engine is coming to a rest. I'm going to see if I can start it even though the engine is hot and there's no flame. Okay, so there's no flame and I'm going to do this quick. But here we go. Yep. There is no flame, but it is still hot enough to start the engine. And I still have the battery pack plugged in because there's not enough heat for the engine to run by itself. But it was able to start itself without me pushing it. And... What happened here okay well it looks like since I don't have this covered up the wire actually shorted itself so when the battery pack is shorted it automatically turns off to the